It's my opening, Victor Shadrach Quetcho here, today on Intimate. Welcome to Intimate. Thank you. I was very fascinated with the topics that you raised up and then I'm glad today we had to talk about it. Okay. So the first topic is embracing, how to embrace your singleness. First of all, tell us who you are. Oh, my name is Jumi, for short. My name is Ola Jumoke Hussein. But Jumi, for short, everyone calls me Jumi, so let's stick to the Jumi. Okay. Yeah, so that's it. That's as much information I want out there. Okay, so. that's great. How to embrace your singleness? Why do you believe that everybody <laughs> must embrace our singleness? Because I believe that being single and being in a relationship are intertwined in a way. Okay, relationship, in as much as not a lot of people want to accept it, a relationship can affect greatly the quality of your life. So before you'd want to get into a no, relationship... A relationship can affect... Yes, the quality, the quality of exactly. Life. Depending on the kind of people that you let into your life, okay. will that positively or negatively impact your life? Yeah. Emotionally, even physically. Yeah. So, before we get into a relationship, there's a lot of work that has to be done whilst we are single. And a lot of people are in a hurry to get into a relationship, in a hurry to be married, that they don't take the time to do what's being single mm -hmm. entails. There's mm -hmm. a lot you have mm -hmm. to do whilst you are single. Mm -hmm. And not a lot of people see that as a benefit. Okay. They see it as, this is not where I should be. I should be married or I should be in a relationship. So, so <coughs> singleness is, let me put it this way, it's not a sin. No, it's not. And, and there are benefits with singleness. A lot of benefits to singleness that okay. I'm, I'm personally enjoying. I mean, okay. you're you are not married, are you? Yes, I'm not, I'm not married. Regardless if you're in a relationship, you are still single. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we are talking from that point. We are not talking of the fact that you are in a relationship. We may, we may touch on that a bit, but we are talking of single in the whole, single whole thing. Yeah. Exactly. There's a lot. It's, I mean, it's fun. I'm not saying it's better off. I'm not saying either married or single is better off. I'm saying that they both have their perks and they both have their issues. So wherever you find yourself, maximize that situation, make the best of it and have fun. Enjoy it whilst you can. Because okay. the moment you get married, you don't get this bag unless of yeah. course you are expecting yeah. to get out of that. Yeah. And of course, yeah. I, I don't want to ever get out of a marriage. Absolutely. This is, the, I, this is my time. Absolutely. My training fields, I can get out of any relationship as and when I want to. Yeah. I can't do that with yeah. being married. Yeah. Exactly. So why am I in a hurry to get to a place I know nothing about? Wow. Exactly. So that's my tell point. Tell us, tell us, give us some points why you think singleness is key to, to a healthy relationship or marriage. I like the word healthy. Very, very, very important. Mm. A lot of people are in a hurry to be in a relationship or mm. being married and are not even concerned about the quality of of the experience mm. or how healthy they, they are they're not even bothered about that it's not even about i want i want someone that can fill me up or something like that someone that can bring some quality to my life it's like i want anybody wow. okay so, so the they, don't even, they don't even like more like scout or that no, kind of thing they don't even like uh, well, a, a few to... people think they are wow a few people think they are but the qualities you have to look for in a person that has the potential to merge with you to bring a quality relationship is not what people are bothered about and that is my concern wow so like the let's go back to the question before we go yes. totally off yes. you were saying that what are the perks or the benefits the of benefits. of yeah. being single okay first of all let's start with childhood upbringing and all that there's a lot of stuff we've learned through childhood our upbringing the way we're being parents the way we're being taken care of the way our parents raised us, yeah. that we have to get out of. Yeah. In this era, we have a lot of people that were raised by single mother, mm. single father, mm. absent parents. Mm. Possible their parents were all present, but yeah. the kind of care and love that they needed was not given or yeah. was not there. Yeah. And there's this trauma. Sometimes this brings up a lot of trauma that we don't even realize until we are mm. growing older. Mm. So when, those, when that trauma has not been addressed. Yeah. So let me give you an example. Say I was raised by an abusive father. I wasn't. My father yeah. is super loving. Like he's the best father in the world. <laughs> and everyone who knows me knows that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just giving an example. Say I was raised by an abusive father. Mm. Or I saw my father beating my mother. I wasn't mm. treating her right. Mm. Stuff like that. Mm. There is this trauma that I have in me that that is what a relationship 
probably she looks like. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So then I haven't given myself the time to win off that idea. Mm. So then I enter into a relationship and mm. the only relationship I can attract to myself or the only time I get excited is when it's toxic. So I get in a relationship with a very nice guy and I'm like, ah, he's too boring. He's too dull. He doesn't scream but at me. He doesn't. You. Exactly. Not oh. necessarily beating, but you, this this toxic ma masculinity. I'm expecting him to be all alpha male and all. It's not necessary. Yeah. yeah I actually saw my father. I had the advantage of growing up with a father who embraced his vulnerability. I've seen my father cry several oh. times. Yes, I've seen my father cry several times. And I never for once thought it because it, it means there's he's no weak. problem in crying. <laughs> I never this for once. Probably express I, emotion. Exactly. I never for once thought my father was weak or mm. it just made me know that okay, I mean it's okay. So when I see a guy crying or probably weak or down or something, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. But there are lots of people who see that as weak. Yeah. So you see, this is just one of the perks. Yeah. One yeah. of the advantages, I mean, yeah. sorry, why we need to win off some of the things that we thought were yeah. right. That's yeah. one. Yeah. Secondly, to we are all looking for an ideal type of person, mm. but not a lot of us are ready to do the work. Mm. And there's, there's an amount of work that has to be done on your own before you even meet that person. Absolutely. And if, if you even realize, the more you, the more mature you get, the more you develop yourself, yeah. the better the quality of people you attract. And absolutely. Exactly. So if I'm looking for a man who is very God-fearing, someone who can embrace his vulnerability, it's just examples. This is not on my list. It may yeah. be, but <laughs> da. So if I'm looking for someone who is God-fearing, who embraces vulnerability, who is willing and ready to communicate, mm. things like that, mm. especially on the very difficult topics. Mm. Why wouldn't I want to be that myself? Because I'm not expecting a man who is super God-fearing mm. or who wants to... He could be faking it, you may never know. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's where the discernment comes yes. in, we'll get there. Okay. So I'm not expecting a man who is God-fearing, who wants to build a very happy home, who is looking for the qualities that are necessary in a woman without necessarily building that in myself. Yeah. I, I may meet the man, but he'll be completely turned off by me because I don't even meet what he's looking for. Mm. Mm. So let's, let's just forget about what you want. Now think about yourself, the character you have to build in yourself, the mm. values mm. you have to build in yourself. Mm. There's a whole lot we can do whilst we are single. And let's not be in a rush to jump into the whole marriage thing. It's fine, it's nice. My sister is married, she's having fun. But I know that myself, there's a lot I need to do with yeah, myself, yeah, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's just what this whole topic is about, yeah. honestly. Yeah, so. This is a point I want to see your mind on. Okay. I've done some research, research about how that uh, many, both sides, mm -hmm. whether a, a man or a female, mm -hmm. if they, they grew up with single parents, okay. uh, the probability that that affects them so much, uh, how, how do you see that? Because, because for example, uh, there's a girl who probably doesn't know how to relate with guys. He thinks that, oh, every guy, I just have to be everything with every guy. Probably because she didn't grow up with her father at home. What do you think about that? I've heard, I've heard a lot of people say that. I've actually read books like that. But I don't want to believe it's true. I think it has become popular. And not everything popular is necessarily true. Um, one parent, or just the presence of one parent, yeah. can be everything you need, depending on who that parent is. You can have both mother and father presents, but they are so toxic anyway. Absolutely. And someone that with a true. single parent will do way better than you in a Absolutely. relationship. That is true. Yes, I mean, to a greater extent, I mean, if we just look at it vaguely, without necessarily going deep, we can all agree that, That's oh, true. yes, if you have just a single parent, what, what um, foundation or what yardstick would you use to measure how good a relationship is? But not necessarily. Let me tell you this. This is about me, personally. Okay. I didn't grow up with my mother at home. Okay. Uh, about 11 or 12 years before I got to know that, oh, this is my mother. Okay. And till a certain time in my life that I had to snap out of all of the things that I was feeling and all that, it was that time that I realized that because of the absence of my mother at home, okay. because of the, you know, this kind of motherly love thing, mm -hmm. if, if a child doesn't have it, okay. it affects the child greatly. I understand. So that. until I realized that I had to snap out of this, to learn to not even love a female, because you could, I could tell that, you know, there was a void inside here. Okay. And that void is to have somebody to feel in, to have somebody to feel in. But until I snapped out of it and I realized that, oh, I have to love myself first. Because even if mother wasn't there, mm -hmm. I have to love myself first and find a way to even love my mother, getting to know. Because uh, we never saw eye to eye until a point in time, <laughs> you know, before that. So I think that on, on some side of this, I think that 
um, honestly, that has a way of affecting I would, I would not completely agree or completely disagree. I sit on the fence with this because I haven't been in your position. Yeah. So I'll be telling a lie if I say I have I, or I understand yeah. how that affects. Yeah. I had my parents present yeah. and luckily for me, my dad like was like super, oh, he's still super sweet. Yeah. My dad is very protective, super sweet. He's not a regular male or the regular father that yeah. a lot of people like the absent father who is not there he's just there to bring money and my, my father was there for everything wow. my father taught me how to cook almost everything i know how to cook now wow. so i don't i wouldn't i don't want to push your experience down and bury yeah. it yeah. you are right to feel that way or you are right to, that's your experience that's your narrative yeah. and if that is how you felt it's it's still okay but it's good at least that's where the self-awareness come in and that's where being single comes Helps. in exactly yeah. so now you are self-aware you know that this is what you have or this is what you are dealing with so then you try to fix it or you try to make up for it you start to parent yourself as you grow yeah. so you know the triggers you have your mother was not there and yeah. there is this research that i mean i wouldn't even say research there's something going around that people believe that when you have an absent parent you have this abandonment issues that the moment someone you, you are in a relationship, you're always scared that someone is probably going to leave and you try to, you are codependent, try to compensate for that. I don't know how far that is, or I don't know how true that it, is. It's like sub, subconsciously, something exactly. that happens to people. Exactly, subconsciously. Yeah. So that is a trigger. Yeah. So when you know so well that this trigger is coming from the absence of a parent, you know, you are very self-aware. Yeah. That's great. No, you're exp you, are not, you are not the reason for that. Yeah. You yeah, just happen to be a byproduct of Absolutely. it. Exactly. So now you are self-aware that this is what I'm dealing with. You work on it. So when you're in a relationship and then you just start seeing, it may not even be what it is, but you start telling yourself, you start looking at your partner, you're telling yourself a story like, mm, this person looks like he's already, he or she's already planning to leave. <laughs> then you can now remind yourself that, okay, yeah. I have this past trauma. Yeah. It may be what I'm, I'm yeah. trying to interpret. Yeah. Then you fix that. Yeah. You don't just dump all your, your emotions on someone else. Yeah. That's where the whole yeah. singleness yeah. comes in. Yeah. So you believe that everyone must sit back, exactly. relax and examine themselves, exactly. spend some time in working on themselves, yeah. and then uh, to figure themselves out first yes. before they step into Be very self As I sit here, I know all my triggers. Mm. Oh, let, me not, let me not boost. Oh, Come, I mean, it's good let's to boast. Coming down. <laughs> it's good to boast. Yes, I, at least it helps you to have an open eye to have sure. your to know your expectations, to know when sure. this is going to work and when this is not going to work. Exactly. Yeah. I know a bit of my triggers. I mean, I've looked at the patterns in my past relationships, and I know what triggers me. So I'm not saying that I've completely worked. It's so hard to to try to push your triggers down, especially when it happens. Let me give you an example. Say there's someone who um, has been abandoned before has abandonment issues maybe from um, parenting or from a very a past relationship where the person was so hoping that that yeah. would be it and it yeah. wasn't it so this person has abandonment issues the next time you enter a relationship and you've been able to tell that i have this trauma that i have not completely healed from when your partner is beginning to act funny not necessarily that they are leaving they may be trying to communicate something to you but due to their lack of proper words or being passive aggressive it looks like they are trying to leave so you see the pattern start looking like the past relationship and because you know you have a trauma you don't immediately jump and say i know what you are doing you're about to leave you mm. don't do that mm. Mm. you mm. assess yourself first okay is this am i sure i'm not projecting something from my childhood or projecting something from my past relationship yeah. onto this person yeah. you understand yeah. so then you are able to think rationally it's yeah. difficult i've Absolutely. tried that before but not with abandonment issues i've tried that with i, I don't want to say it out loud because you know i'm very <laughs> private i don't yeah, yeah exactly I, they say trigger i have and i tried i tried that some time ago with my relationship and and when i saw that trigger coming i was trying to push this trigger down it took me like three days Wow. The next day I woke up and the thing was still there. I was like, with all the books I read and all the knowledge I have, I know so well that this is a past trauma that is trying to trigger me to act. I still acted on it. I'm wow. telling you. So even sometimes having the knowledge does not necessarily mean that you will not be a jerk. Absolutely. Absolutely. You may still be a jerk, Absolutely. but then you'll be a bit, you'll be better. I yeah. mean, with time, yeah. the more you continue to exercise yeah. that, you get better with time. Yeah. That's why we need to be single. Yeah. That's just why we yeah. have to. So singleness for a while, is key it's, to it's a healthy key. relationship. Yes, it is. Okay, can you share with us three examples, just three examples that of people should use to get to 
uh, practice the act of singleness because I also believe in. I, I don't. I don't get it. Examples, so, for example, mm -hmm. uh, reading. You know, reading oh, is key yes. to help. Oh yes. Things to do whilst you are single. Things to do whilst First you are of single. all, my number one, get closer to God. I'm mm. sorry, but it, it's not a cliche. Yeah. People think that when you say God fearing, it looks like you are trying to make people see. This thing is very important because the whole idea of marriage. It's from the Bible. Yeah. No one got up anywhere someday and said, let's do this. Yeah. It's actually from the Bible. Yeah. And it's the Bible that teaches us how to do it right. Yeah. So, and if you understand the whole concept of love, biblically it said that and God gave us the spirit of love. Yeah. So love is not something that just falls on you. It's not mm. a butterfly whispering in your mm. tummy. It's mm. a spirit that we have yeah. in us. Yeah. And we choose how to demonstrate that yeah. or how to act on it yeah. so i think first thing get closer to god now you have the time because yeah. the the probability that when you get married and then kids come into the mix you will not have so much time to spend with god is yeah. very high yeah. yeah so what are you doing with your time now yeah. so first get with god number two work on your character your attitude, attitude. Work on your character. Some people will enter a relationship and tell you, me, this is the way I am. Oh, take me the way, take me like that. Are you serious? <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't Honestly, work. It doesn't I work. can love you, like, love you die. Yeah. But with time, when I realize that you keep repeatedly doing things that keeps yeah. jeopardizing yeah. the relationship we have, yeah. the love I have for you can only go so far. Absolutely. I would only tolerate you over time. Yeah. But and eventually long? with time, because I want quality, the kind of, the kind of quality relationship I want for myself, the way you are coming off, you, are, you yourself, you are eliminating yourself from this Absolutely. whole situation. Absolutely. You get it, Absolutely. exactly. So that would be f work on yourself. And then the third one is marriage is a lifelong, I mean, if you, the whole African setting, let's yeah. not even bring the Western world here. Yeah. A lot of us frown on divorce big time. Mm. So if you are expecting to get married and you are expecting to let the marriage last, you cannot get into a, an institution you know absolutely nothing about. Mm. Hollywood and all these movies and all these music videos we watch, they are not even good examples. Let's mm. be honest, they are just acting. Yeah. Read books. Yeah. Read books, have mentors. I remember one time I was listening to this. Can you suggest some of the books that we should read? Phew, I knew that. <laughs> I had a thing that was going to come because you know I read a lot. Yeah. Okay, so I had this um, pastor I used to listen to on YouTube. And there was a time he was, he kept mentioning get a mentor, get a mentor. I, I, in, at a point, I didn't want to accept that. Yeah. I was, I, when I'm done watching the video, I'm like, why do I need to get a mentor? I can do this myself. And I'm a very private person. So I was like, no, I can do this myself. Then it just dawned on me that what yardstick am I even using to measure what I'm doing? Why not talk to people or why not? Not necessarily a mentor you can physically talk yeah. to. It can be someone that's maybe on YouTube, someone yeah. you don't know. Or you're reading a book. Exactly. Of but the reason I would recommend someone you know personally is not a lot of what we see on social media is true. Mm. I cannot, pictures and videos are just a capture of a moment. Mm. I can't necessarily tell that this is the life you live mm. outside social media. Mm. So I can take, take this pastor as my mentor and then I keep seeing pictures of he and his wife. Oh, he's yeah. been lovely. I don't know what is going on in their house. Absolutely. So the best mentor you can have is someone close to you. Yeah. An auntie whose marriage is going really well, yeah. a friend, an older friend, someone who has an experience. Yeah. At okay. least when they are even close, you can have exactly. conversations with them. Exactly. Great. Help. So um, some of the books, I've read so many books there. Eh? I've read so, I'm reading one currently about infidelity. Okay. And I'm, I'll be very honest with you. I'm very bad with keeping authors. Titles. Yes. No, I can tell the, the title of the book, but I'm bad with keeping the names of the, the authors. authors. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So I read one recently that I think is very great. It's called, uh, what's the title again? Is I Once Loved a Girl. Okay. And it was written by a preacher. And the reason I like that book is that it has about eight stories of different couples. Wow. There was one that was married. There was one that was, uh, they were just dating. There was another they were not dating, more like friends with benefits. Yeah. So it gives you, and this preacher, the whole story is like the preacher tells us stories about these different couples yeah. and how he fixed their issues and all. Yeah. So it's more like a counseling session yeah. in a book. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I loved that book so much. And then um, there's also another one, Love, um, Love and Respect. I've forgotten who wrote yeah, that yeah. book. I think I read that book, but I also forgotten it. I've, the yes, I forgot. Yes. The title is Love and Respect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How, respect. how a, a man is supposed to love a yeah. woman, then a woman yeah. respects him. Absolutely. When the love is missing, yeah. the woman in a bid to communicate to you that 
she feels like your love is missing, start Absolutely. to disrespect you. Absolutely. And you feeling disrespected, stop loving Absolutely. her. So the, it's called the yeah. crazy cycle. Yeah, 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 yeah so yeah, the yeah. cycle keeps going. Yeah. That's a very good book. Yeah. Um, they, are, they are quite, I, I've lost track, yeah. but I have okay, a whole so lot I'm, of I'm also them. going to recommend two books, um, okay. two books on getting to understand uh, who, who you are, uh, as, as in personality, uh, bid to this whole relationship thing, I uh, get to find out um, on this book, the five love languages helps. Yes, you get that's to know one. your love language. That's one, I agree. By that, you get to see when your partner is meeting your love language or not. And then it's written by, I'm sure it's Tom. I'm sure it's Tom, Tom Lehe or so. Also, get to f read this book, Why You Act the Way You Do. Ah, I have it's that about, book. <laughs> it's, about, it's about the temperament, getting to know your temperament. Yeah. And then uh, get books from my mentor, um, Dr. Miles Monroe. You get to. Great. Uh, find out the power of woman, the power of man, uh, waiting and dating. All those books are good for you to for to help you be able to have a, a solid singleness. I mean, a whole face of singleness, even and in marriage, it. even in relationship. Yeah, these books are these books are key. They help you to be better and have a healthy relationship. One of the, the reasons a lot of people run away from singleness is they they interpret singleness as being lonely. But I'll tell you today. I'll tell you today, personally, the loneliest part of my life that I've ever had. Now I'm like super happy. I'm, the, the, the part of my life I am, I am living now is content and at peace. Mm. Yes, honestly. The loneliest content and at, at peace. peace. <laughs> the loneliest part of my life was like three years ago. And I will tell you I was in a relationship. Wow. I, was, I was horribly lonely. Wow. And it, it was independent of the person I was in a relationship with. So the with. fact that you're in a relationship that it doesn't no guarantee. Even, uh -uh. There are people who are married and are still lonely. And there is, let's understand that loneliness doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. You can be married and still, you know, in marriage, you have to keep this individualism yeah. as well. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean you are lonely. Yeah. I have my life, you have yours. Yeah. So there'll be episodes of connectedness, togetherness, and individualism, you know? So marriage doesn't necessarily cure that loneliness. You have to, whatever it is making you feel, fix that. Getting someone in that mix, you are just dragging someone else. If you are Absolutely. dragging someone who is at peace and con Absolutely. content or someone who is super excited, Absolutely. you are dragging them into your mess. Wow. And that's very selfish. Wow. Yeah. There was a, a book I read from Dr. Miles Monroe, um, The Act of Singleness, Practicing the Act of Singleness, even in relationship and even in marriage. And he asked this question, if you know the you you know today, will you marry you? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm asking you that same question. If you know the you you know today, Will you marry you or will you even date you in the first place? I know, right? So, this is how to embrace your singleness with Jumi. Thanks for watching. Leave us your comments and tell us your experience. We want to know. Peace.